Okay. okay, how about we do decomposition? Decomposition reaction. Decompose. This is, I can let's decompose. Watch you. a video again. I, Mr. Berkman again. Actually, before we watch the video, should yeah. we just learn what types they are, maybe? Oh, sure. Yeah, let's do that first. Oh, so, yeah. in a decomposition yeah. reaction, you have one substance that turns into two, two. or more. Right. Usually two, could be, it could be more. So AB turns into A and B. So an example of that would be um, actually the reverse reaction, the one we just talked about. Yeah. Water can be con decomposed into hydrogen and oxygen. Yeah, because this is the exact reverse of a synthesis or a combination reaction. Yeah. If you flip it around, you have a decomposition reaction. And the word decompose makes sense too, guys, right. because if you think something decomposes, it breaks apart, breaks down. Like, uh, yeah, okay. Or here's another one, potassium chloride, breaking down to potassium chloride and oxygen. Now, these are not balanced reactions, by the way, guys. We'd have to balance them. Some of these we've already balanced, so it's not that important. Now, I think we should do a demonstration video. video. Okay, so who's going to video this one? I think it's you this time. Is it me? I get it to is. decompose and fire. I get to play with fire. Whoa. <laughs> All right, I want to show you today a decomposition reaction. Now remember, a decomposition reaction, you start with one thing, and it breaks apart into multiple things. So the chemical I brought with me today is hydrogen peroxide, okay? This is the stuff that you can just buy at uh, City Market or King Supers or whatever your local grocery store is. I'm going to pour that into a test tube. Now hydrogen peroxide kind of by itself decomposes into water and oxygen gas. So it's actually decomposing right now, but it's a very, very slow reaction. So I'm going to add something to it that should speed up the reaction. This is not a part of the reaction. This is what we call a catalyst. And the catalyst we use will be manganese dioxide. So I'm going to get a small amount of this. Now, one of the products of this reaction is oxygen gas. OK, so it's a little black powder. I'm going to put it right here. Because one thing about oxygen gas is that it's highly flammable. So I'm going to take um, a match and light the match, if I can light a match. And I'm going to light this uh, little stick here, uh, a wood splint, so that after this reaction takes place, where do matches go, Mr. Sams? On the floor. On the floor. OK, it's the safest place to put them. So I'm going to add this. This should produce oxygen gas. And then watch what happens when I put this in here. See how it lights up much brighter? That's because we are producing O2 gas. And there's not a whole lot. See, it stays lit even when I put it in there because it's producing this oxygen gas. You can even blow it out and make it glow and turn it in there. It'll turn back on or reignite. Hey, look at that. There you go. See how that's pretty cool. Should do it again because it's producing the oxygen gas. And actually, it's actually this is a combination reaction and then a decomposition reaction at the same time. We're, we're decomposing the hydrogen peroxide to produce the oxygen gas. And as I produce the oxygen gas, we're actually having a combination reaction. Hydrogen plus oxygen makes water. So pretty cool. Oh, man, that was fun, Mr. Sims. Yeah, it stunk up the room. No, that was the earlier one. This yeah. one didn't stink up the room. Yeah, no, it was, it was really cool. Although yeah. it still smells. It does, yeah. Okay. Hey, single replacement. We should talk about single replacement. We should. Now, single replacement are interesting reactions. Well, right, let's learn about these. All right, this is an interesting one. You have A plus BC. Mm -hmm. So this BC will be an aqueous chemical, almost always. Yeah. And there might be some exceptions, but yeah. um, for our purposes, for our purposes they, they will yeah. always be. So you've got some, uh, usually it's an element, actually not, it's, it's an element, plus some chemical BC, and it basically, A, decides he likes C better than B does, and B gets kicked out. Yeah. Okay, we'll use an there's analogy. A, there's a life that. lesson in here. Yes, indeed. Yes. Okay, so here we have an example. If I take iron, and I react it with silver nitrate, mm -hmm. it's going to react and what's happened is the iron's going to say, you know what, I like nitrate better than silver. And so he like kicks them out yeah. and says, sorry, you don't get, you don't get to stick with no. nitrate no more. And then um, iron connects with the, with the nitrate and then the silver gets kicked out. Yeah. So, yeah. There it goes. That's how it works. Yep. Okay. Let's, let's do an analogy, a little life okay. lesson, Mr. Sams. Um, let's talk about a single replacement reaction. Okay. So let's pretend that, um, you, did you go to high school? I did go to high school. Good. Good. I'm glad. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He went to college, too. I did. All right. So um, let's say that Mr. Sams, he, uh, he took a, a girl to the homecoming dance. Okay. We just had the homecoming last we week. We did. Yeah. So we have Mr. Sams, Mr. It's, S, it's, plus his date. It's, 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 it's. Sorry, it's the music of the dance. <laughs> he took, uh, what do you think, Mr. Sams? All right. So we'll say S, that's you, for Mr. Sams. Okay. And then we'll say um, uh, C, your girlfriend was Cheryl. How about that? Okay. I don't know. Was she Cheryl? No. Oh, what was her name? Um, girlfriend in high school. Gosh. 
This is part of the problem. Uh, okay, so he, he went to the dance with this girl. <laughs> okay, and let's say that just the most awesomest guy showed up. All right, he was just really a really good-looking young man. And I don't know who his name is. Let's call him a Frank for F, okay? What happens okay. when we go to the dance? Um, well, I'm guessing my girlfriend's probably going to say, see, I'm going to go with Frank. Yeah, see, see Cheryl yeah. really likes Frank, so she gets together with Mr. Sams and... No. Uh, with, with Frank, and then Mr. Sams gets kicked out. Yeah, it's by sad. myself. Yeah. Lonely. So he gets because I forgot her name. <laughs> <laughs> this is a problem, Mr. Sam. All right. I forget my own name half the time. So, an interesting thing also that would happen, sadly. What happens if Frank took Cheryl to the dance and Mr. Sam showed up? Not going to happen. No sweat, no change. Yeah, Mr. Sam took us to be the lonely guy. Why? Yeah. Because he. Uh, the reaction only goes one way. Yeah, Frank and Cheryl are better a better couple than you would have been with Cheryl, sadly. Yeah. 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 It's all right. It's kind of like we call sometimes the attractability index, and Mr. Sams, as you can see, is not the most attractive man in the world, so <laughs> it's an analogy. Okay. Yeah. I'm married. It worked at least yeah. once. Yeah, we're, that's, that's only got to work once. Yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> okay, um, I think we should probably do a demonstration. We probably should. So that you can get this idea and see what it actually looks like. We get to play with silver. Silver! Woo! Okay, what I want to demonstrate for you now is a single replacement reaction. Now in a single replacement reaction, we start with an element. In this case, we're going to use copper, solid elemental copper, so just plain old Cu, solid. We're going to add that to an ionic compound. This is silver nitrate, AgNO3. Okay, so we have a, a metal ion and we have a metal atom. All right, so we're just going to pour some of this into our little dish here. Just enough to cover the copper. So that's kind of expensive, so don't put too much in. <laughs> and we're going to put our copper in here. Now, this one doesn't react instantly, but um, in a few minutes, you'll see that some silver is forming on the outside of the copper. I'm actually going to add a little bit more just to cover it all up. It's kind of in the shape of a pumpkin, Mr. It Sam. is. You know, it is the season. It's fall. It snows in the fall here where we are. So we had a Lots of snow today. Um, yeah, but you can start to see it's no longer that shiny copper color. It's starting to turn into kind of a, a darkish color. That's actually silver that's forming on the outside. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, stop this. We're going to come back in a couple minutes. We're going to see what that looks like. All right, it's been about 20 minutes since we started our single replacement reaction. So let's take a look and see what we have here. So you can see that uh, a lot of the silver that was in the dissolved solution in that clear and colorless liquid came out of the solution. It, it, uh, it replaced the copper. So what it did is some of the copper that was on the copper metal became copper ions. And then the silver ions in solution became silver metal in the single replacement reaction. So you can see on here there's actually coated with silver. Ooh, you can see really well there on the back side. That's pretty cool. Mr. Sam, why don't you put that on that little piece of paper, maybe, and I bet it'll, it'll flake off. Try oh, yeah. to tap it. Some of our silver metal there on the paper. Chunks of silver. So if we were to collect that silver, Mr. Sam's, oh, we yeah. could make, make a ring out of it. Or we something. could, or, you know, take it down to your local pawn shop and make some money. Yeah, there you go. In this economy. There you go. That... But that's, uh, it's why silver nitrate is so expensive, because it has actual silver in it. Yeah, but cool. replacement. And we forgot to finish this one. I, I just ah, that was pretty cool. That yeah, was cool, actually. So you got just silver, actual silver coming out of a solution. So actually, one thing that's very cool about these reactions is you tend to get these sort of precious metals yeah. in their pure form yeah. out. So actually, maybe you're not so ugly after all. Maybe you're that's actually right. a precious metal. I am a precious. Thank you, Mr. Bergman. It's yes. kind of you to say so. Yes, indeed. <laughs> okay. Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, no, I won't say that. Okay, um, <laughs> the last one, no, not the last one, the second last one is double replacement reactions. Okay. This is sort of an interesting one, too. Yeah. All right, we have AB plus CD makes AD and CB. Yeah, so this, uh, there's another life lesson in here, I think. Yes, so A takes B to the dance. Yep. And C takes D to the dance. Mm -hmm. When they get to the dance, they uh, switch partners. Yeah. They decide that they like the other person's partner, and they switch. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that's how that works. Yeah. So here's a, a classic example. If we have barium, he takes chloride to the dance. Sodium takes sulfate to the dance. When they get together, they switch. 
barium decides he wants to go with the sulfate girl, if you will, and sodium wants to get her with the chloride girl, and hmm, they trade partners. Don't there they go. Now, how you get them together and balancing, it's important thing. Some might say, well, why don't you write Na2Cl2 there, Mr. Sam? Well, that's because we put them together the way the actual formulas form, and then we go back and balance them later. Yeah, and we'll, and we'll, we'll talk that about that later. in a subsequent podcast, yes. but it's important to note that, okay? All right. So I think we should do a demonstration. I think we probably should. All right. So, Mr. Sams, you ready? I'm to ready. Make some chemicals <laughs> and put them together into a very, very interesting. <laughs>